So um, hi, everybody. Uh, so it's my pleasure today to uh, introduce you to uh, DocIntel. Um, first of all, a little bit um, about me, because apparently we are obliged to give a fun fact. So uh, my name is Antoine. I'm, I've been developing code since I'm four years old, um, and I have a PhD in uh, computer science and risk analysis. And the fun fact is um, I'm a student in a cook school, and I've been spending hours in ambulances over the last 10 years. I currently I work at the Belgian defense where I try to provide uh, the best of my expertise. I'm, I think that I do not need to repeat that today, but it's still good to um, hammer the same nail. So cyber threat intelligence is, is key. Uh, it's becoming more and more important in organization, but we all face one problem is that we get intelligence or at least data um, really, really fast and at a volume and a scale that it is in, that is increasing. But we have a very mixed um, data that comes in. We have very technical data with malware analysis, but we also have very strategic data with like geopolitic, geopolitical um, analysis. Um, and so we have specific needs as um, cyber threat intelligence analysts. And so we need specific tools. Most of the tools that we have today, they are focused on structured data and on technical indicators. I think that uh, many presentations over these last two days have spoken um, about these um, structured data, the technical indicators, but we need the context. I, most of the time, the yada yada that we have in reports, we need that at some point. And um, that's one of the key um, problem that we uh, try to solve with uh, DocIntel. Among the challenges that we have, knowledge management is hard, but in particular, there are multiple problems um, that are um, specifically important for a CTI team. So the availability and the control of the information that we get, um, we need all our team members to access the um, uh, threat reports, but we don't want other people to access those reports. So it's important to uh, control that information. We also need to be able to search efficiently in all those reports, including with these obfuscated indicators. And that's where, for example, CTI has specific needs for tools. But we also have other problems, like uh, we need the information to be categorized, to be uh, at least a little bit organized so we can find it back. Uh, we have experts that okay, share uh, their expertise with uh, your organization, but we want to keep the knowledge they share, uh, because maybe at some point they will leave for another company, for another organization, but we still want to keep all the knowledge they uh, have given to the organization over the years. I'm tracking the sources and how, how reliable they are. It's also very important for a good quality threat intelligence. Um, and because of the volume, because of the speed, we want to automate as much as we can and reduce the workload on the analysts. I'm speaking about availability and control. I, we have reports everywhere. I'm, you will get back onto your organizations with the slide deck that have been presented over these two days. Those slide decks, they are not available on the internet. You will probably not find it if you just Google, at least for some of them. You have all these um, vendors that are selling reports and to access those reports, you need to connect to their portal and to search in their portal. That's fine if you only have one vendor, um, but if you have multiple ones, uh, that's sometimes very painful. Then we have all the folder on all workstation with reports in there. Um, that's very hard to search in them, um, difficult to share with um, junior analysts that just joined the team, for example. So it's very time consuming to search in all these sources. And sometimes it's even impossible to search in all those sources. And searching, um, as I mentioned, uh, we have specific needs. We want to search for exact phrases, sometimes for harmonica. Uh, we want to search for approximate terms, for example, with uh, some threat names. Uh, every vendor come with a variation uh, on that specific name. And we also want to search for obfuscated indicators. For example, if you have that IP address and you are looking for that one, you want to find the report that mentioned that IP address, even if it is obfuscated. Um, and you want to find that efficiently and fastly. So what is DocIntel? DocIntel is a centralized knowledge base for your threat intelligence reports. The key objective is to make all the threat reports available to every member of the cyber threat intelligence team. 
to facilitate the search so you can find the information back and to encourage the collaboration between all the analysts. The goal is to replace the folder that we have that is named reports and to replace these uh, vendor information portals that are painful to use. And the focus is really on context, not really on technical indicators. Most of the time, the, those reports are like the starting point of our investigations, um, and that's the focus of that intel. So five years ago, the uh, organization I worked for, um, we were tracking all the reports that we received um, using an Excel sheet. And there is a better way, uh, because it's time consuming. Uh, you can only have one analyst that is opening the file at the same time, but it does not really work. It does not really scale. Um, and we were looking for another solution. Nowadays, we have uh, DocIntel. So that's the, uh, the home page of, the, uh, um, of DocIntel, um, and that's my home page. It's personalized to my needs, uh, to the specific tags that I'm interested in. I, I will dive into a little bit more details on how the information is structured. But from that page, I can go to the report, and then I can read the report directly in the web application. Right? So I can see the title, I can see the summary that has been written by the analyst, I can see how it has been tagged and categorized, I can view the sources, uh, I can view the rating of the source, I can view when it was ingested, when it was updated, and I can read the report all in one single interface. I can also view um, the structured data that has been extracted from the report. So for example, here we have a bunch of hashes. Um, those have been extracted from the document and they are ready, um, readily available in the application. I can search for them, I can export them, um, I can export them to Excel so I can do the rest of my analysis. The key features of DocIntel are the following ones. The first and central feature is search and filtering um, on this search. So you can quickly find the relevant information you need to start your investigation, to start your analysis. The goal is to organize the knowledge and we use tags for that, um, to track and rate your sources so you know where the information comes from and to control the information so not everyone has access to the same information. The key concepts are the following ones. Um, at the core of DocIntel is the concept of document. A document is a bunch of files uh, that are coherent. For example, uh, you receive a PDF report with the CSV with a bunch of IP addresses, and you bundle all those files under a document. The document has a title, a description, and tags um, that, you, um, that will help you organize the information. So we use tags to organize the information, and we group the tags in coherent sets that we call facets. So a facet is a set of tags that is coherent. So for example, here, we have a bunch of countries that are tags in the facet target country. So we use that to categorize a threat report that mentioned, for example, an attack targeting a specific country. So I can find back all the reports that mention an attack that has targeted a specific country. We have different facets, for example, here with software. All documents are written by sources. Uh, and we keep track of all those sources. We can read those sources. So we have general analysts that can focus only on sources that have been vetted by the cyber threat intelligence team, for example. We have comments, um, and we use that in two different ways. The first way is that um, when you receive a report, sometimes you take action on the report. Uh, you share the report, you search in your CM, and you can record informally all those actions in the comment. We also use that to share the expertise. For example, if a, um, a report mentions a malware and you have a malware analyst that check the reports and say, okay, that's mostly correct, but they are missing that step or that step, then they can record that as a comment and that's knowledge that you keep even if that malware analyst leave the organization. And then we have structured data, although it's not the focus of DocIntel, it is there and it's backed by uh, Synapse. I say, you can reuse all their good work and, uh, and just um, have it displayed in a document. You can subscribe. It's a very much like a YouTube. Uh, you can go to a tag or go to a source and then you subscribe to uh, that tag or that source and you will receive a um, tailored new, uh, newsletter on a daily basis with the new reports that matches uh, your subscription. Also your own page is personalized based on the subscription you have. So not all analysts see the same on page. We have also role and permissions that allow you to control precisely what a user can do and cannot do. 
uh, it's very fine grained because in larger theme, you have often um, much um, well-defined roles that are important to keep. We have a layer of automation using importers and scrapers that will gather the information and populate the database for you. And then we have groups that helps you control who can see the information. So you can release a document to a specific group and making sure that nobody outside the group will be able to see the document. If you can search on Amazon to find the right product, you can search on Documental. You have a search bar and then you have filters that help you fine tune your search exactly the same. You have a search bar and you have filters that help you find the right report. So for example, here, um, you might be looking for log4j, no idea why, has been popular some time. Um, and then you have all these reports and then you can fine tune your research based on the tags that you have used when uh, you encoded the document in the paper. Encoding the documents, it takes a um, quite a long time. Uh, it's uh, quite a workload for most of the team. Um, and so Docintel is there with a bunch of features to help you um, streamline that processing. Uh, so it will do its best to extract the metadata, the tags based on the keywords or regular expressions. So for example, if a report mentions a CV, then it will extract that information for you. Um, it will also extract um, as much as it can um, on structured data like IP addresses or URLs or domains. Um, but it's really um, like an air traffic control software. It's not, there to, it's not there to replace the user, it's there to assist the user. So the user still has to review the information that has been extracted to ensure that we only have high quality um, registered documents. Um, the rest of the presentation, I will just show you one of the use cases that we have. I think that many uh, CTI teams um, do some sort of daily collection and processing, and it's like reviewing uh, what's going on today. Um, so for example, you found a, a new article, and that article is um, relevant for your organization. It's interesting for you. What you can do is just um, copy paste the URL of that, uh, that blog post, give it to Docintel, and then uh, Docintel will fetch the document for you. We'll try to remove the ads, the menu, and all that just to extract the content. And then it will pre-process the document and it will be available for you to register. So for example, here, that's the, the top item. Um, it went to the internet, got the uh, article, um, so that a bunch of techniques were mentioned in there, a bunch of software were mentioned in there, and it uh, pre-processed the document for you. All you need to do now is to edit and that. So for example, I can edit the title, I can add a small description about um, that report, I can check the tags, I can check the source, um, the classification, in that case, okay, it comes from internet, so it's unclassified um, and available to everyone. Then I can review all the observables, so all the structured data that's been extracted by the tool. So for example, here I can review the hashes, I can review the domains, um, and I can tell Docintel, okay, that's a URL that um, I want to keep, and that that is a URL that I do not want to keep, and I do not want you to ask me that later. So for example, I mentioned, okay, um, for us, not interesting to ingest, so I will just tell Docintel, do not suggest any URL that, that matches that domain. So the system will learn um, the ones that you don't want in your um, collection, and it will not propose that again. So uh, it makes the process uh, more efficient over time. When it's fully registered, uh, you can view the document, you can view all the structure, the information that you extracted, and it's um, available for you to search. Um, so you can search for it and start with it. There is a little bit more, but in um, the time that I had, um, I, I could not uh, present you all the features. It's a tool that we have been developing for four years. Uh, so for example, we have a bunch of features to automate your collection. So we support some commercial feeds um, that will um, be fetched automatically and fed into uh, Docintel um, directly. We support RSS feeds. Um, so you can just add your RSS feed and then Docintel will go to the website, extract the content, generate a PDF, pre-process the document for you. Um, so you can uh, uh, enjoy your coffee uh, lazily.
uh, you can get lazy also because you can get notified for all the reports that in, that come into the platform and that matches what you need. Uh, so for example, let's say that I'm interested in Chinese threats. Um, I can subscribe to the tag uh, source geography China, for example, and then I get a notification every time there is a report that has been added and that matches uh, what I need. Of course, you have plenty of tags and it might be painful for a new organization uh, to uh, generate all these tasks, all these tags. So you can import existing um, taxonomies, existing galaxies or warning lists or attack framework or whatever. Uh, so it can pre-populate and help you bootstrap your effort using the tool. We integrate with um, different tools and different processes because there is a complete API uh, that you can use to um, integrate with other scripts that you um, that your organization might be using. So you can push documents automatically into the Docintel or retrieve all the observables that were uh, ingested over the last, for example, two days. You can control what the user can see and what the user can do. You have groups and classifications that help you fine tune uh, um, the dissemination of the information. And we have roles and permission that really helps you decide what the user can do and what the user can't. Um, on top of that, there is a layer of security because um, we are in the field of cybersecurity. So we like to be sure that uh, nobody is uh, badly handling our data. Um, so we have multi-factor authentication. We integrate with active directories and we provide an extensive audit log. So you can always review whether your specific user has done in the application, what reports he has read, what reports he has downloaded. Under the hood, it's a significantly large uh, C sharp application that uses the .NET framework. Um, and for storing the information, it uses um, a Postgres database and a Vertex Synapse database that has been mentioned this morning um, that is used to store all the structured information. So if you already have such an instance running, uh, you can just connect Docintel to your existing. Um, instance, and when you are reading a report, if there are contextual information that is known in your Vertex Synapse instance, it will be displayed. Um, it's a free and open source application. So you can download the code, you can review the code, you can install it. Um, we recommend Docker to just deploy the uh, application. Um, we have a bunch of users that are testing it. So Feel free to test, feel free to report all the bugs that you find. Um, and you can find even more information on our website. I also encourage you to join the Slack channel if you are interested by the tool. Uh, yeah, so in a, in a conclusion, that's a, an open source platform for storing, organizing, and searching in all your documents, mostly related to cyber threats. It will provide a searchable central repository for all these threat reports. Um, it has been proven to improve the consolidation and the dissemination of the knowledge in organizations. The tool has been built for the analyst and they've used it um, for the last four years. Um, the focus is on context, on all these yada yada, um, and on reports, not on technical indicators, which makes the platform a little bit different from um, other open source software. If you have any question, I will be really glad to answer them now. Uh, also, feel free to ping me on Twitter um, or on the Slack or later this week. Thank you.